Okay, this is the P4 paper from June 2024. It's question number five, and you can see this is going to be uh, a parametrics equations one. I'm going to be finding the area under a curve by integrating. Uh, there's a little bit of partial fractions work as part of my integration as well. But it's quite a long question, so let's have a look and make a start. It says we've got this uh, sketch of this curve, these two parametric uh, equations, um, and for part A, it says the ends of the curve lie on the equation y equals 1. Can I find the value of A and B? Yeah, absolutely I can, because that's simply going to be both of these values for t equals A and t equals B will be where y equals 1. So let's have a go at just doing that part there. So part A, we've got that uh, for A and B... y is equal to 1, which is 2 over t, 3 minus t is equal to 1. So I'm just going to solve that now, multiply everything by t, 3 minus t. It's going to give me 2 equals t, 3 minus t. Multiply this out and turn it into a quadratic. So 3t minus t squared, and tidy that all up to t squared minus 3t plus 2 equals 0. You can use quadratic formula and everything else like that, but I'll be very surprised if this one didn't factorise, so I'll have a go at that first. And yeah, it does. It factorises to t minus 1. Oh, sorry, t minus 2, not t plus 2 there. t minus 1, t minus 2, which is going to give me t equals 1 or t equals 2 as my two values here for A and B. Lovely. Okay, that's part A done. Part B then says, can we work out the region R? Can we show it's given by this thing here? Well, I can certainly make a start on it. If I want to work out the region R, well, the first thing I have to say is that if I do the integral of Y dx, that gives me the area under the curve, the area between the curve and the x-axis. That's not quite what I want. So if I want to work out R, R is going to be the rectangle, this rectangle here, subtracts the um, integral of y dx. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to tidy all that up and write that properly now, but that's what we're going to be doing. So let's tell the examiner first of all what we're doing down here. So we're going to say part B, um, area R equals area of the rectangle, and I'll define what the rectangle is in a second, area of the rectangle minus the area, my handwriting is awful, sorry, area under the curve. And so it's up to us now, do I want to do the rectangle or the area under the curve? First, let's do the rectangle. So uh, for the rectangle, What have I got? Well, remember here for the rectangle, we've got t equals 1 and t equals 2. So what that means is I'll be able to work out this x value and this x value here, and then I'll be able to work out the area from that point. So for the rectangle, uh, t equals 1 is going to give me that x is equal to 1 squared plus 2 lots of 1, which works out to be 3. And if t is equal to 2, x is going to give me 2 squared plus 2 lots of 2 this time. And that gives me 8. So if those values now are 3 and 8, then the width of this rectangle is 5. We already know that the height there is 1. So area of the rectangle, um, area equals 5 times 1 equals Five. So that's the area of the rectangle. What about the area under the curve? So area under the curve. And the area under a curve, we've already said it, is the integral of y dx. Now what we've got to do is we've got to change that into um, a parametric one because our equations are in parametric. So that's y dx dt dt. So if I'm doing that, it's the integral of that 
Well, between one and two, I'm not going to do any extra work for that. We've already worked out the, the limits of it. What I will need to do is to work out what dx by dt is. So let's do that first. We know that x is t squared plus 2t. So dx by dt is going to give me 2t plus 2. So now my area is going to be the integral between 2 and 1 of y dx. Remember, y was 2 over t 3 minus t, and then dx was dt, sorry, was 2t plus 2 dt. So that's the integral of y dx dt dt. So let's just tidy that all up. So what can I get there? I can have that as, now we were trying to prove it was equal to something actually, so go back here. Right, yeah, if we look at this part here, I've got t plus 1 at the top there, so on the numerator. So when I'm doing this, can we see that this is the integral between 2 and 1 of if I take 2 as a factor out of that, I'm actually going to get, get 4 t plus 1 all over t 3 minus t dt. And then if we take the 4 out, we get that. And so the actual area of R that we were looking for, so area R is 5 minus, use the magic of the iPad here, 5 minus, sorry, 5 minus the integral of that. And that now is in the correct format we've got there with m being 5 and k being 4 in that setup. C part 1 this so it says, can we break t plus 1 over t3 minus t into partial fractions? Yeah, I can do that. A nice, easy, quick bit of partial fractions here. So C part 1. Uh, what have we got? We've got t plus 1 all over t, 3 minus t. So I'm going to call that a over t and then b over 3 minus t. If we look at this right-hand side, if I want to add these together then, I'm going to get that plus, handwriting again, sorry, plus that all over t, 3 minus t. This times this, this times this, and the bottom two times together. Shouldn't really have any problem with that at this stage of the course, so that's equal to t plus 1 over t, 3 minus t, and then we equate the numerators. So equating the numerators, I would imagine you've seen lots of videos of me doing this. Do the same thing every single time. So I'm going to get t plus 1 is equal to a, 3 minus t plus b, t here. And then what we've got to do is to try and get rid of the a and try and get rid of the b. If I set t equals naught, I'm going to get 1 is equal to 3a plus 0 there. So that will give me a being equal to a third. And if I set, what do I need to set t equal to? t equal to 3, that will then give me 4 on the left-hand side is equal to 0 and 3b. So that means that b is going to be 4 over 3. So t plus 1 over t3 minus t can be written down as, as we just said, a over that. So a third over t plus four thirds all over 3 minus t. And then we wouldn't leave it like that. We'd just make that slightly neater, wouldn't we? So we'd make that 1 over 3t and 4 over 3, 3 minus t. Okay, so that's the partial fractions part done. And then for five part two, or C part two, sorry, it says, can we now find the area of R, which means can we solve the integral, which means finding the answer to the integral of this thing here, 
but I'm going to change that fraction, aren't I? So again, I'm going to just save myself a bit of time with my iPad. So I'm going to say, for part two, area required is equal to that, which is then equal to five minus four, brackets two and one here, but instead of having t plus one, I'm going to have one over three t, plus four over three, three minus t, dt. So I'm, I'm hoping you've done quite a few of these. It's really, really a good idea to get rid of that third that's on the bottom there. Just make things slightly easier for yourself. So I'm not integrating yet. I'm just going to take the third out, which gives me the integral between two and one of one over t now, and four over three minus t dt. And I'm going to do this pretty quickly from here because I'm assuming that you would have practiced these and would be able to do these integrals. The integral of one over t is log t. The integral of four over three minus t, well, first of all, let's treat it as one over three minus t. So the integral of one over three minus t is log three minus t, but because of the minus, it becomes minus log three minus t. And then we had a four on the top, so that four doesn't go anywhere. So we get that as being... Uh, my two integrals, so it's going to be that, four thirds obviously, and that between the values of two and one, and now we've just got to tidy this up to an answer. Just go back and quickly check, did they make, ask me to make it look like anything? No. So sometimes they'll say in a format, and they'll, they'll say you've got to have it in terms of log two or log three or whatever, but here, no, just as quickly as we can get through this then, so this is five minus four over three, Okay, I'm going to put log. I'm going to put two in, and I'm going to put one in. So if I put two in, I get log two minus four log one. Well, log one is zero, so that's quite nice. Minus, and then I'm going to get log one, which again is zero minus four log three minus one, so four log two here. So then tidying that all up, that's going to be 5 minus 4 over 3. I've just got 4 log 2 and 1 log... I've got 5 log 2 there, so over 5 log 2. So we just want it to look relatively neat here. I'm going to leave this, because they haven't said anything else, as 5 minus 20 over 3 log 2. And as I say, they could have asked me to do something else with that, but unless they asked me to put it in a format, that's simplified and uh, that will be my answer. So, yeah, quite a long question there, lots of different parts to it. Um, you might need to look at that video a couple of times, but hopefully that will make sense to you all.